An embarrassing incident for the federal government that made international headlines last fall is trending once again. New reports show the Liberals not only invited a veteran who served in a Nazi unit to the House of Commons where he received a standing ovation, but the Prime Minister's office also personally invited him to a reception to honour the Ukrainian president. Emily Taylor has been following this story all day today and joins us with the very latest. Emily. Hi, Nicole. In the fall, the Speaker of the House, Anthony Rhoda, took full responsibility for acknowledging the veteran in the House of Commons, saying he didn't know he served on a Nazi unit. He resigned over the incident, and in a heated question period today, the Conservative opposition is calling on Trudeau to do the same. Justin Trudeau's office now says it invited Nazi veteran Yaroslav Hunka to a reception for Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in Toronto, the same day Hunka was given a standing ovation in Parliament, all without knowing his Nazi connections. Trudeau apologized in the House of Commons in September. For all of us who were present to have unknowingly recognized this individual was a terrible mistake and a violation of the memory of those who suffered grievously at the hands of the Nazi regime. But it was Speaker of the House Anthony Rhoda who took responsibility for inviting Hunka to the House and ultimately resigned over the incident. I would also like to add that this initiative was entirely my own. The individual in question being from my writing and having been brought to my attention. Both say they were unaware the 98-year-old served in the Ukrainian unit at the SS Waffen during the Second World War, bringing up questions of what kind of vetting process the guest list underwent, if any, and sparking public outcry. Uh, I guess what changes really is a, an appreciation of the competence or incompetence of uh, Justin Trudeau's office. Clearly his office uh, hadn't vetted uh, this individual, uh, or if they had and, and they hadn't found anything, or and they certainly hadn't uh, indicated anything to the Prime Minister ahead of the events of that day. And we feel that the Prime Minister's office, you know, owes and it must take responsibility for this, this mistake. Um, it's a very embarrassing mistake. Um, and, you know, I think that, that they owe an apology to, to the Jewish community, to the Ukrainian community, and actually all to all Canadians. The invitation was sent by the Office of Protocol of Canada to Hunka. He did not attend the reception in Toronto. In an emailed statement today, the Prime Minister's office says Trudeau had no knowledge of this individual, and knowing what is known now, the individual should not have been invited. The office says Hunka's name was submitted by the Ukrainian Canadian Congress. The UCC has not responded to our request for comment. The invitation was a focus during a fiery debate in the House of Commons today, as Conservative leader Pierre Polyev called on the Prime Minister to resign. And he said that the former Speaker had to resign over doing the exact same thing. So will he hold himself to the very same standard and admit that he's not fit for office? <laughs> Trudeau refused to answer the question directly, instead talking about the Conservatives' lack of support for Ukraine in the war. The attacks that the leader of the opposition is choosing to make against the Ukrainian Canadian Congress demonstrates the extent to which this Conservative Party no longer stands with Ukraine. While many are calling on the Trudeau government to take responsibility and apologize, the political scientist I spoke with today says it's unlikely we'll see any more statements from the government or any more resignations.